From childhood, I began to travel through the sky to experience the wonderful life of various leading roles and supporting role, which changed my mind when watching the play. Biased Towards Daily Life Xiao Huanqi Rebirth of Xiao Weidong, giving 36-year-old Xiao Meng a home, determined not to get used to Song Qian's illness, already completed, everything is pretty good. Su Mingzhi, the demon who helped his father through rebirth, is determined not to get used to Su Daqiang's flaws. Even though he is just a salaried person and has lost his job, he still pretends to be a wealthy person buying a three-bedroom apartment. In progress, mainly focused on urban dramas, with a golden age of only 30 years and so on keywords of the novel. Zhu Tian Film and Television, starting from childhood joyful Xiao Weidong without pop-ups, Zhu Tian Film and Television, starting from childhood joyful Xiao Weidong, downloading the full text, and Zhu Tian Film and Television, starting from childhood joyful Xiao Weidong, reading the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Rebirth of Xiao Weidong You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Rebirth of Xiao Weidong In the morning of mid-August 2017, at a luxury mansion worth around 30 million yuan in Kyoto, a middle-aged greasy man woke up in bed with hazy eyes and was surprised to see a strange bed and a strange woman holding his neck next to him. Didn't I watch the TV drama Xiao Huanxi again after I was at home? Where am I? Who is the woman next to me? Did I get kidnapped and the fairy jump? Suddenly feeling that his brain had been infused with unfamiliar memories of over forty years, Zhou He, who had a slight headache, took away the woman's arm. The woman was awakened and said with hazy eyes, Old Zhou, you get up first. I'm in bed for a while. I got off work too late yesterday. After speaking, the woman turned her head and turned over to sleep. Seeing the woman who had turned over to sleep again, Zhou He, without any disturbance, lifted the blanket and walked out of the room to the living room, receiving unfamiliar memories. The body that I have traveled through is called Xiao Weidong, a middle-aged greasy scumbag from the TV series Xiao Huanqi, with a value of over 100 million yuan. There is a beautiful fitness yoga coach girlfriend named Xiaomeng, and of course, there is also an ex-wife named Song Qian and a cute daughter named Dingzi. Zhou He, who had merged with Xiao Weidong in his memory, shouldn't have asked Xiao Weidong to show a spoiled smile when he thought of Ingzi, a well-behaved and intelligent daughter. But I can't figure out why I became Xiao Weidong. The other protagonists are all high school students like Fang Yifun or Lin Liar. I am not handsome even though I am 25 years old. But at least it's just a young man from a year ago, who suddenly turned into a middle-aged greasy uncle at 45. No one can accept this. At least he lived for twenty years less. But when I think of Xiao Weidong's worth exceeding one hundred million in my memory, it becomes balanced. With a monthly salary of around five thousand yuan, even if you don't eat or drink, it will take one thousand six hundred and sixty-six point six years to earn. As soon as I think about this week, I have a balance, at least with a lovely daughter and a sexy and intellectual girlfriend named Xiaomeng. As a loser with nothing in reality, having these twenty years of time may not necessarily be achievable, and I have simply skipped the process of struggle. Zhou He, later referred to as Xiao Weidong, could only console himself in this way. At first, I didn't feel any difference between this drama and other dramas. There was no such thing as dog blood, and the three families who had gone through countless hardships all ended up with a happy ending. But will everyone really live well in the end, and will everyone really be happy? Let's start with the Ji family. If Lu Jing's cancer doesn't recover well in the later stage, she won't be able to live for a few years. The Fong family's middle-aged unemployed voice actors may not earn much money, and Tong Wenjia may not still be in her original position after giving birth. She earns more than before and also needs to support two college students. Selling a house costs over 10 million yuan, with some remaining after deducting the purchase of Song Qian's house, but it can also earn several years of savings. The Chiao family will not mention Xiao Weidong, who remarried Song Qian. Xiao Yingzi is the most pitiful, and there is a possibility of recurrence of depression. When watching the drama, 
Zhou He suspected not only that Ying Zi had depression, but also that Song Qian might have some mental illnesses. After Chiao Weidong remarried, Song Qian's desire for control may not last long. Moreover, even if Ying Zi goes to Nanjing to attend university, Song Qian's personality will interfere in finding boyfriends, including getting married and having children in the future. Ying Zi's condition is likely to recur. The rumors about Chiao Weidong's infidelity in the drama are also speculations from Song Qian. Zhou He recalled the memory of Chiao Weidong in his mind. After being discovered by Song Qian for cheating, it was possible that Chiao Weidong had also been a bit tired over the years. Without further explanation, Song Qian thought that Chiao Weidong had agreed. In fact, Chiao Weidong was drunk unconscious that day, doing nothing and nothing. Of course, I don't know if that woman has any other thoughts. When Chiao Weidong thought of this, he heard the creaking sound of the bedroom door opening. Take a look back. Xiao Meng walked over in lace pajamas and asked Xiao Weidong, who was sitting on the sofa. Old Xiao, why are you still sitting here without going to wash up? Don't you go to work later? After finishing speaking, Xiao Meng didn't wait for Xiao Weidong's answer and turned to the bathroom to wash up. Xiao Weidong looked at this beautiful figure and couldn't help but feel a bit lost in thought. Xiao Meng should be the most pitiful woman in the drama, and in his memory, Xiao Weidong had no intention of marrying this woman in his heart. It's impossible to say that she doesn't love her at all, but Xiao Meng definitely loves Xiao Weidong more than Xiao Weidong loves her. Xiao Meng may not necessarily be for Xiao Weidong's money, as Xiao Weidong's worth of over a hundred million yuan is not even ranked in the capital. This poor woman, at the age of thirty-five, experienced being ignored while trying to please Yingzi through hot pot, and mistakenly drinking the bird's nest that Song Qian gave Yingzi, which Song Qian angrily rebuked. I even wanted to give birth to a child for Xiao Weidong, in order to regain my position in Xiao Weidong's heart, but I couldn't get approval listen to what Xiao Weidong said to Fang Yuan, we cannot have children. Having children is a betrayal of Yingzi. This kind of excuse can also deceive children who have not attended kindergarten, and even children who have attended kindergarten cannot believe it. Xiao Meng left Xiao Weidong with a heartbroken heart and married her old classmate who had been waiting for her. When Xiao Weidong thought of this, he felt that he would definitely not be able to remarry Song Qian in the future. Regardless of who is beautiful between her and Xiao Meng, first of all, I don't like women who have a pathological desire for control. Secondly, she is not as beautiful as Xiao Meng. Thinking of the scene of Xiao Meng doing yoga in my memory makes me feel a little hot. After Xiao Meng finished washing up, she saw Xiao Weidong still daydreaming on the sofa and loudly asked him. What are you staring at in the morning? What are you thinking? If you don't go wash up quickly, I still have to go to work after dinner. I'm thinking how I could find such a beautiful girlfriend. Xiao Weidong stood up and looked at Xiao Meng, who was still beautiful without any makeup, and said a sentence full of love. She leaned forward and gently hugged her, the fragrant scent emanating from her hair, giving off a reassuring scent. Xiao Meng looked at Xiao Weidong, who was hugging her and wanted to take the man away. She hugged her arm and said in silence. What's going on this morning? It's nothing, I just feel a bit sorry for you. Xiao Weidong blocked Xiao Meng Meng and took his arm away, saying softly. Xiao Meng was a bit puzzled at this moment. Could it be that Xiao Weidong wanted to break up with him, or could it be that mentioning marriage a few days ago made it difficult for old Xiao? Before Xiao Meng could answer, Xiao Weidong released his arm that was holding Xiao Meng and knelt down on one knee, saying with a straight face to Xiao Meng. Ms. Jin Meng, in the drama, there is no explanation of Xiao Meng's surname, so the author follows the surname of the actor who played Xiao Meng and asks Xiao Meng to have the surname Jin. Let's get married. What are you saying, old Zhou? I didn't hear you clearly. Xiao Meng suddenly heard Xiao Weidong say something about getting married, and felt a bit uncertain for a moment. Xiao Weidong looked at the poor woman and sneered at her predecessor's actions. I talked to Xiao Meng for three years, but every time she mentioned getting married, she would change the topic and not answer directly. 
I don't think about 35-year-old Xiao Meng, after all, a woman's golden age is only a few years. Xiao Weidong slowed down his pace and said to Xiao Meng word by word. Ms. Jean Meng, let's get married. I believe I can definitely give you the life you want in the future. I can't just agree so easily, at least I don't even have a ring. Xiao Meng looked at Xiao Weidong, who was kneeling on one knee and proposing to her, and regained his senses. Moved, she gently helped Xiao Weidong up and tightly hugged him, responding beautifully to him. Upon hearing Xiao Meng's words, Xiao Weidong thought for a moment and looked around. Finally, he picked up the beer on the coffee table and opened it with a bang. He put the beer back on the coffee table and picked up the can tab. Kneeling down on one knee again, holding up the can pull ring, he said affectionately to Xiao Meng. Ms. Jean Meng, are you willing to marry me? Thank you very much for being by my side all these years. Although the zipper is worthless, I can give you all my sincerity in the future. Please let's spend the rest of our lives together, so that I can always take care of you and take care of you in the future. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Register with Xiao Meng. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Register with Xiao Meng Seeing Xiao Weidong's very picky proposal ceremony, I heard these very heartfelt words. Xiao Meng shed tears on the ground, raised her hand, extended her ring finger, and slowly put it into the pole ring. Although the pole ring is a bit small and can't even fit in, I still feel very happy inside. Old Joe, I promise you. Xiao Meng had a thousand words to say in her heart, but when it came to her mouth, she only said these few words. Seeing the tears flowing from Xiao Meng's tears as he put his hand into the pull ring, Xiao Weidong suddenly remembered something and hugged it in his arms, saying softly in Xiao Meng's ear. Xiao Meng, can I ask you something? Can we hold our wedding in a year's time? Why? Xiao Meng, who was in Xiao Weidong's arms, asked in confusion. Xiao Weidong pulled Xiao Meng onto the sofa and sat down, explaining to him. Ingzi took the college entrance examination this year and she never understood why I divorced Song Qian. I'm afraid learning that we're getting married will delay Ingzi's college entrance examination. Speaking of this, Xiao Weidong said to Xiao Meng, who was sitting together on the sofa and leaning against his arms. I may have wronged you this year. After Ingzi's college entrance examination ends next year, I will give you a grand wedding. Xiao Meng leaned on Xiao Weidong's shoulder and said happily to him. I understand that during the college entrance examination, one is most afraid of emotional fluctuations. I have also taken the exam before, and I don't care about those rituals. As long as I can marry you, I will be satisfied. Besides, Ingzi is your daughter, which is my daughter. I will definitely treat her well. Seeing Xiao Meng so sensible, Xiao Weidong tightly hugged Xiao Meng and smiled slightly, saying to Xiao Meng in his arms. After we have breakfast, let's go to my father.in.law and mother.in.law's place first and ask them if they agree to marry my precious daughter to me. At the same time, let's explain the reason why the wedding will not be held temporarily. Strive to register with the Civil Affairs Bureau tomorrow, you are my legitimate wife, Xiao Weidong. Seeing Xiao Weidong's arrangement, Xiao Meng felt a bit embarrassed. But I have to go to work today, don't you have to wait for me to rest before going? Seeing his fiance A. E. Xiao Meng who needed to work at a yoga studio, Xiao Weidong thought for a moment and decided to open a fitness yoga studio for Xiao Meng, as this industry still has a promising future. Moreover, Xiao Meng's professional level is also good, and even as the boss, he can have some free time. Thinking of this, Xiao Weidong showed a lewd smile and said to Xiao Meng, It's better to take a leave with the boss, and in the end, you should resign as soon as possible. Xiao Meng turned around and asked Xiao Weidong in confusion. Why resign? Xiao Weidong smiled at Xiao Meng and replied. Actually, I have considered opening our own fitness and yoga studio. Due to work pressure, there are particularly many people in the capital who need to exercise. Speaking of this, Xiao Weidong kissed the beautiful woman in his arms. And I also believe in my wife's strength, 
she can definitely make money. Besides, even if you lose money, your husband can still afford it, Xiao Weidong said arrogantly to Xiao Meng. Xiao Meng looked at Xiao Weidong's face with a wrinkled beard and focused small eyes, and for some reason, she felt particularly handsome. This should be the beauty in the eyes of the lover. I'll take a leave with the manager first. It's better to discuss resignation face dot to dot face after starting work. After finishing speaking, Xiao Meng left Xiao Weidong's arms and called to ask for leave. At this moment, Xiao Weidong remembered Wu Jun, a fellow villager from northeast China who worked as a real estate agent. He picked up the phone and made a few unsuccessful attempts. Listening to the silent prompt sound in my ear that couldn't be connected, I finally connected and said. Lao Wu, it's me, Xiao Weidong. What are you doing? It's already a few o'clock and I haven't gotten up yet. The man on the other end of the phone heard the familiar northeastern accent and rubbed his eyes a few times with drowsiness and said weakly. Don't mention it, I drank with the client until early morning yesterday before returning home. What's going on, old Joe? What's going on? After a brief conversation, he asked for his help in finding a gym venue. On the other end of the phone, Wu Jun also agreed and said that he would invite Xiao Weidong to have a meal after the opening, so he hung up the phone. After hanging up the phone, Xiao Meng answered that she had finished washing and changing clothes in the room. Xiao Meng also took a two day leave with the unit leader. After Xiao Meng finished putting on her makeup and the two of them changed their clothes, Xiao Weidong asked the driver Lao Liang to take her and Xiao Meng to their hometown in Tianjin. After arriving at Xiao Meng's hometown in Tianjin, I met with my parents in law and talked about their planned marriage registration. Of course, I also confessed to the second old man that the wedding would be postponed. After listening to the reason for the delay in the event, the two of them expressed their understanding. After having dinner with their parents in law in the evening, the two of them, who had rested in their hometown for a night, bid farewell to the reluctant elderly and returned to the capital. After returning to the capital, the two of them went to the Civil Affairs Bureau to register. On the way to the car, Xiao Weidong drove to Xiao Meng, the co-pilot, and asked with a smile, tilting his head. I'm about to go to the Civil Affairs Bureau, there's still time to regret now. I don't regret it. Marrying you is the happiest thing for me. Xiao Meng, the co-pilot in the car, answered happily to Xiao Weidong as he drove. Upon hearing Xiao Meng's answer, Xiao Weidong, who was driving the car, looked at his beautiful fiancée A.E. with a sweet expression on his face and extended his right hand to grab her hand. At the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau, Xiao Weidong, who had parked his car, unbuttoned his seatbelt and did not get out directly. But instead, Xiao Meng was instructed to wait in the car for a while and go to the supermarket to buy some candies on her own, so that she could give the staff a boost of joy when registering. Old Xiao, you still have experience in registering this matter. Xiao Meng joked with a smile at Xiao Weidong. Upon hearing Xiao Meng's teasing words, Xiao Weidong knew that Xiao Meng was joking with him, so he turned over and kissed Xiao Meng with a smile on his face, saying. Why do you think I'm getting married again now? It's already too late for me to tell you. Without waiting for Xiao Meng to answer, he opened the car door and got off. I ran all the way to the nearby supermarket to buy candy. Seeing Xiao Weidong's joyful movements, Xiao Meng also showed her aunt's smile, giving off a feeling of playing with her own bare child. After buying candy from the supermarket, Xiao Weidong came out and saw that Xiao Meng's figure was no longer in the car. He saw Xiao Meng, who had already got off the car and was waiting at the entrance of the Civil Affairs Bureau, calling himself. Quickly walking over with a spoiled expression on his face, he asked, Why didn't you wait in the car? It's so hot outside, what if you get sunburned? Let's go. Come on in, it's cool inside the hall. After finishing speaking, he pulled Xiao Meng into the hall of the Civil Affairs Bureau. Xiao Meng looked at Xiao Weidong, who was pulling her increasingly childish, and coquettishly said in a tone full of love, it's okay, it won't take too long to get sunburned. After filling out the information in the hall of the Civil Affairs Bureau, 
the two of them waited on the side to take their wedding photos. Xiao Weidong looked left and right. Paired up, each with a cheerful smile on their face. It's your turn. After a while, the staff responsible for taking photos shouted at them. After taking the photos, Xiao Weidong brought Xiao Meng to the application window and submitted the materials. The staff in the table took the materials and after completing the process, handed the marriage certificate to the two with a smile on their faces and said. Congratulations, congratulations. Xiao Weidong, who received his marriage certificate, heard the blessings of the staff and quickly asked Xiaoming to hand over the pre-purchased wedding candy to the staff, saying, please have some wedding candy. Today's work went smoothly. After obtaining his marriage certificate and walking out of the door of the Civil Affairs Bureau, Xiao Weidong hugged Xiaoming and said with tears in his eyes, thank you, Xiaoming, for becoming my wife. Thank you also for becoming my husband. Xiao Meng, who was embraced by Xiao Weidong, answered passionately. The two of them then got on the car and went home, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Fishing at Work You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Fishing at Work After taking a short rest at home, Xiao Weidong led Little Dream, who wore a white shirt and a gray half-skirt, to a jewelry store owned by a friend to choose a ring. Xiao Weidong, who had already said hello to his friends in advance, parked his car in the parking space at the entrance of the store. He got off the car and walked to the entrance, where he saw the shop owner warmly welcoming him out. Old Xiao is here, these are my younger siblings. They are so beautiful. You are really lucky, old cow eats tender grass. My younger siblings are so beautiful. Marrying you is a waste of time. The shop owner saw Xiao Weidong and Xiao Meng at the door, and after hugging Xiao Weidong, the shop owner looked at him with a smile on his face and joked. Xiao Weidong looked at his old friend who was teasing him, but of course he wasn't angry either. He smiled and said. When we were in school, old Xiao was also a school grass, wasn't it good? Quoting a classic line, our old Xiao was also a famous handsome young man from all over the country. After finishing his narcissistic smile, Xiao Weidong introduced his boss to Xiao Meng next to him and said, This is boss Lao Li. Just call him Li Gu. Watching the two of them playing around, Xiao Meng was very happy to hear the shop owner praise him for his beauty. He took the initiative to shake hands with the owner and said happily, Li Gu. Then you have to give me and Lao Xiao the biggest discount. The shop owner grinned and said, Don't worry. That's necessary. What's the relationship between me and old Joe? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go in and chat, it's hot outside. After speaking, he welcomed the two of them into the shop. Xiao Weidong, who entered the store, hugged Xiao Meng and looked at the decoration of the storefront. He said to the shop owner with a hint of flattery, Old Li, you have done a good job with the decoration, haven't you put in a lot of effort? Well, when it comes to decoration, I personally monitor the entire process. From decoration to material selection, I carefully select and use the best materials. The shop owner heard Xiao Weidong praising the decoration inside his store, as if he had been scratched and replied proudly to Xiao Weidong. I won't accompany you for now. There's something going on in the store, so I'll have an old employee accompany you in the selection process, said the boss after chatting with Xiao Meng and Xiao Weidong. After finishing speaking, the shop owner called for an employee to lead the two of them to the counter to choose, and called for the employee's instructions, saying, Xiao Zheng. Take Lao Xiao and his team to choose, and bring out the best in our store. Employee Xiao Zheng replied, Good boss. Xiao Zheng stood up in front of Xiao Weidong and Xiao Meng, with a smile on his face and a standard posture. He pointed his right finger and said, Xiao, please come with me, both of you. Xiao Weidong held Xiao Meng's hand and turned to the shop owner as he walked, saying, Okay, let's go pick the ring first, Lao Li. You're busy first, we'll talk later. The shop owner waved to Xiao Weidong and said, Okay. 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 Later, 
Xiaomeng and Xiao Weidong picked out a pair of two carat diamond rings worth 600,000 yuan. When they went to pay the bill, Xiaomeng held on to Xiao Weidong's arm and whispered in pain. Old Xiao, there's no need to buy such an expensive one. Just buy a smaller one. Xiao Weidong held Xiaomeng's hand and said affectionately, Xiaomeng, I just want to give you the best. Besides, your husband is not short of this money. After listening to Xiao Weidong's words, Xiaomeng walked towards the cashier with a happy expression on her face. When I arrived at the checkout, I was informed that I had already received a 20% discount. We originally needed 600,000 yuan, but when we checked out, the staff said 420,000 yuan would be enough. When Xiao Weidong intended to express his gratitude to Lao Li, he was informed by the staff that the boss had gone out for something. Xiao Weidong could only mutter helplessly, this old Li. Later, I sent a WeChat message to Lao Li, which roughly means thank you. I won't say anything extra, so we can have a drink together when we have time. Without waiting for Lao Li to reply, Xiao Weidong led Xiao Meng back home. After returning home, the two of them had dinner and took a shower, leaning against each other on the sofa, chatting while watching the variety show. The dazzling night scene illuminated Xiao Meng's beautiful face, and Xiao Weidong couldn't help but feel a little dazed as he stared at her. When Xiao Meng looked at Xiao Weidong, she couldn't even move her eyes. Xiao Weidong's weathered face felt particularly handsome and attractive for some reason, firmly captivating Xiao Meng. Unable to break free and gradually falling in. Their eyes intertwined and their hearts gradually quickened, as if their hearts were about to jump out. Unconsciously, Xiao Weidong had already tightly embraced his wife next to him, lowered his head, stroked her face with both hands, and gently leaned his lips together, with four red lips pressed tightly together. Xiao Meng lay in Xiao Weidong's arms, feeling for some reason that old Xiao was a bit different from before. He didn't have so many movements before. I just obediently closed my eyes, as if everything was taken for granted. Forget to think, don't want to think, just hold on to him tightly, don't want to part ways. Xiao Weidong gently picked up Xiao Meng, who was like a sloth, holding his neck with both hands and straddling his waist. Xiao Weidong hugged Xiao Meng and walked into the bedroom. The moonlight slowly covered the eyes the next morning. After finishing breakfast, Xiao Weidong escorted Xiao Meng to his workplace and instructed him to resign as soon as possible. After that, Xiao Weidong came to his own company, which was not large and only had 67 people, mainly responsible for managing some stocks, funds, and other investments invested by Xiao Weidong. When he's not usually busy, Xiao Weidong doesn't come over much and just calls to discuss minor matters. Entering the company, Xiao Weidong greeted his subordinates and walked straight to his own office to start fishing. During this time, he explained his work to the employees who came to report and began to daydream. I kept fishing until November 30th, noon when Xiao Weidong, who was bored, took out his phone and made a video call to Xiao Meng. After connecting, I saw Xiao Meng wearing a yoga suit because of practicing yoga, and my heart was also filled with excitement. Is it because of time travel? A normal middle-aged man in his forties should not have this impulse, and his performance last night was not like that of a middle-aged man who often drinks and doesn't exercise much. Is it travel welfare? Xiao Weidong muttered. Xiao Meng saw that after the video was connected, Xiao Weidong, who didn't speak, wiped the sweat from the instructor and said to Xiao Weidong. So, Lao Xiao, what's going on? It's nothing, I just missed you and wanted to see you. Did you have lunch? When do you finish work? I miss you. Just say a word. Xiao Weidong made a kissing expression on Xiao Meng's phone screen and said one after another. Seeing Xiao Weidong's numb expression, Xiao Meng couldn't help but blush. She remembered that Xiao Weidong was even more red last night, and that she had asked her four or five times yesterday, like a young man in his twenties. Xiao Meng quickly sorted out her expression and said to Xiao Weidong in a serious tone. I have already had my meal, and I have already mentioned my resignation to the leader this morning. I can leave in about fifteen days. 
I'll also ask Wu Jun how he found the venue later. Upon hearing Xiaoming talk about something serious, Xiao Weidong put away his lewd expression and said seriously. After chatting with Xiaoming for a while and hanging up the video, Xiao Weidong thought for a moment and called Wu Jun. After connecting. How did Lao Wu search for the house? Have you found it? On the other end of the phone, Wu Jun, a real estate agent sitting in the director's office, said to Xiao Weidong, if you don't call, I'll have to call you later. I found three, but the area, address, and price are all different. When do you have time, I'll take you to take a look. Xiao Weidong heard Wu Jun say, then let's do it in the afternoon. I have time in the afternoon, the earlier it is, the better. Wu Jun raised his hand to look at his watch and said, then let's schedule two o'clock. Okay, I'll see you at two o'clock then. After speaking, Xiao Weidong hung up the phone. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Looking at the house and signing a contract. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Looking at the house and signing a contract around 1.50 p.m., Xiao Weidong arrived at the agreed gathering place with Wu Jun, a CAFA, unexpectedly, the waiter had already said that Wu Jun had arrived early. Seeing that Wu Jun had already arrived early while drinking coffee, Xiao Weidong sat down in front of Wu Jun and felt embarrassed, saying. There is a traffic jam on Lao Wu Road, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting for so long. I just arrived and didn't know what kind of coffee you were drinking, so I casually ordered one for you. Due to his profession as an intermediary, Wu Jun, who was accustomed to arriving early, picked up the coffee on the table and took a sip. Xiao Weidong placed his phone and car keys on the table, and then casually said on the chair. I can't get used to drinking this thing either, everything I drink is the same. Wu Jun smiled and put down his coffee, picked up the tablet he had placed on the table before and handed it to Xiao Weidong, introducing him to three suitable locations for opening a gym. Let's talk later. Let's get down to business first. You can take a look at these three venues, which one is more suitable. According to your premise, due to time constraints, only the following three items are currently eligible. Xiao Weidong took the tablet and flipped through it. After reading it, he handed it back to Wu Jun and said to him. Could you please give me a brief introduction? I can't understand it just by looking at it. Wu Jun took the tablet handed over by Xiao Weidong, closed it, and put it in his bag, saying. Okay, I'll give you a brief introduction first, and we'll see them one by one on site later. I have made an appointment with the landlord, and I can go and see it any time. Immediately after, Wu Jun took out the map and pointed to the geographical location and transportation route to introduce it to Xiao Weidong. The first one is in the Sai Asian Games Village, with a total of two floors, about 570 square meters, and a monthly rent of about 80,000 yuan. The transportation is convenient, and a few hundred meters away is the subway station and bus on Line 5, as well as numerous office buildings and densely populated residential areas. The second location is at HD Zizhu Bridge, which is also a two-dot story building. It is slightly smaller than the previous one, about 500 square meters. However, the price is slightly higher, about 80,000 yuan. It is adjacent to the street and the subway and bus stations, with convenient transportation. The surrounding office buildings and residential areas have a large flow of people and strong consumption capacity. The third location is also slightly off the side of Sai, outside the North Fifth Ring Road, with a total of one floor but a height of seven meters. You can decorate it yourself later. The rent is relatively cheap, around 28,000 yuan, and you can get it. Xiao Weidong listened to Wu Jun's introduction and frowned as he said. I don't quite understand these, let's do this. I'll take these materials home and show them to your sister. In. Law. Let's go to these venues and have a look first. Upon hearing Xiao Weidong's words, Wu Jun tidied up the materials on the table and put them in his bag. He stood up and said to Xiao Weidong. Okay, let's go to the scene first and take a look. Don't drive, just make my car. 
Afterwards, the two of them who had bought the order walked out of the CAFA together. Xiao Weidong sat in Wu Jun's A6 and went to see the venue one by one, how to say these three locations. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages. The first one is relatively close to our house and the rent is decent, but it feels like the traffic is not very good and it's easy to get stuck in traffic. Xiao Weidong, who arrived home to bid farewell to Wu Jun after almost 8 o'clock in the dark, sat on the sofa and introduced the advantages and disadvantages of the three venues to Xiao Meng one by one. After introducing the first location to Xiao Meng, Xiao Weidong picked up the cup from the coffee table and took a sip, then introduced it. The second one is a two-dot-story street facing building, which is quite convenient for transportation, but slightly more expensive. The third rent is cheaper, but the location is quite remote, it's all outside the North Fifth Ring Road. Xiao Weidong, who introduced the scene to Xiaomeng, frowned tightly and leaned against the sofa, unsure of how to choose. Sitting on the sofa together, Xiaomeng saw Xiao Weidong with his eyes closed. In the past, she hugged Xiao Weidong's arm in pain and coquettishly said. You worked hard today, old Joe. I've been running all afternoon. Seeing Xiao Meng hugging her arm, Xiao Weidong gently patted her hand and warmed her judo. No hard work. Besides, a little bit of hardship is also worth it. If you book the venue earlier, you can also open earlier. Hear Xiao Weidong's comforting words. Xiao Meng didn't speak, but she tightened her grip on Xiao Weidong's arm, as if afraid it might run away. Feeling the soft Xiao Weidong on his arm, his heart beat a little faster, and he couldn't help but look at Xiao Meng's beautiful face with a hint of warmth. Then the princess picked up her little dream and walked towards the bedroom, deciding to take care of the matter first. She said arrogantly. Doing the right thing is important. Xiao Meng saw Xiao Weidong walking towards the bedroom with a slight blush on his face after everything had calmed down, the two of them lay down together to rest. Little Dream, lying in Xiao Weidong's arms, said to Xiao Weidong. Old Zhou, I feel that the first venue is relatively good. There are two floors, the first floor can serve as a fitness area, and the second floor can serve as a yoga area to ensure privacy. And it's close to our home, and the geographical location is also good. Xiao Weidong, who was lying in a more comfortable position, also agreed. I feel the same way. Both the second and third venues are a bit far away. Xiao Meng asked Xiao Weidong, then let's book the first one. Let's do this. Tomorrow after you finish work, I will take you to the site to take a look, after all, you will be the main manager in the future. If there's no problem, let's make a decision. Xiao Weidong said to the little dream in his arms. Xiao Weidong and the other two fell asleep after a brief conversation after several rounds of bargaining with the landlord, we finally paid 525,000 yuan in rent with a monthly contract of 75,000 yuan as collateral for Mr. Liu. The next day, after sending Xiaoming to work, Xiao Weidong drove to a decoration company. After repeated discussions with the designer about planning the fitness area, yoga area, running area, etc., a total renovation cost of 320,000 yuan was calculated. A construction period of about 30 days has been determined, and decoration workers have been arranged to conduct on dot site testing in the afternoon, leaving spare keys in the decoration company later. Xiao Weidong glanced at the contract handed over by the decoration company, confirmed its accuracy, and signed it at the location of party A below. After waiting for Xiao Weidong to sign the contract, the leader of the decoration company stood up, smiled, and shook hands with Xiao Weidong, saying. Happy cooperation, Mr. Xiao. Xiao Weidong also stood up and shook hands with the leaders of the decoration company, saying, have a pleasant cooperation. Afterwards, Xiao Weidong, who had a brief conversation with them, got on the car under the supervision of the leaders of the decoration company. I drove to a northeast restaurant to have lunch and even called Xiaoming to discuss the decoration situation. After finishing his meal, Xiao Weidong looked at several manufacturers specializing in fitness equipment. 
After comparing prices with three different manufacturers, we finally booked some fitness equipment and necessary facilities for yoga gyms from a manufacturer with good quality and reputation. After paying the deposit, we made an agreement with them and asked them to deliver them after the decoration was completed. After leaving the equipment company, Xiao Weidong raised his hand to check the time. It was almost time for Xiaoming to finish work, so he went downstairs to wait for Xiaoming to finish work. After waiting for a while, Xiao Weidong, who was about to fall asleep, heard the sound of the co-pilot opening the door. Xiao Meng got into the car and fastened her seatbelt, saying to Xiao Weidong. You've been tired all day today. Have you finished everything? Xiao Weidong, who was preparing to start the car, said to Xiao Meng, the co-pilot. Everything is ready, I only owe you to resign and become the boss's wife. Xiao Meng rubbed her sore leg from the previous day's lesson and said. How could it be so fast? Then the two of them started the car and returned home the coding is relatively slow, end of this chapter. Chapter 5 English Smash Open the door, stay there. You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 5 English Smash Open the door, stay there. In the blink of an eye, on the morning of late August, Xiao Weidong, dressed in a floral shirt, with a stubble on his face and golden glasses, and holding an astronomical telescope in his hand, appeared at the entrance of the Xuxiang Yayuan near the well.known high school in the capital, Chunfeng Middle School. Everything has been going smoothly for the past half month, and the decoration of the gym has also begun to take shape. Just yesterday, Xiaoming resigned smoothly from her original unit. When leaving, Xiaoming's manager still said. You can come back anytime, and the company will always open its doors for you. Thinking of this makes Xiao Weidong want to laugh. If a good boss doesn't do it, who will go back to work for you? After Xiaoming resigned, she could focus on the decoration, and Xiao Weidong, who had some free time, decided to take a look at his daughter. This not only appeared at the entrance of Xuxiang Yayuan, but also bought Ingzi's favorite astronomical telescope. Holding a gift for Ingzi at the entrance of the community, Xiao Weidong decided to give Song Qian a call first. Then he placed the telescope on the ground and took out his phone to call Song Qian. After connecting, he said directly to Song Qian on the other end of his phone, Song Qian, I am at the entrance of the community and plan to come and see Ingzi. Song Qian, who rents the house to Ji Yang Yang's mother Lu Jing at the other end of the phone and has just returned home to make Ingzi nutritious tonic diet, hears that Xiao Weidong wants to see Ingzi, and when she has arrived at the entrance of the community, Song Qian instinctively replies in a refusal tone. How did you come? Xiao Weidong, who was standing at the entrance of the community making a phone call, quickly said to Song Qian on the other end of the phone. Later, you can open the access control and I'll bring some things for the child. Song Qian, who is making tonic diet in the kitchen at the other end of the phone, frowns and refuses. Didn't we agree to meet once a month? Don't break the rules, okay? Excuse me every day. You go back first, I have to hang up beforehand. After saying that, Song Qian on the other end of the phone had to hang up. Upon hearing that Song Qian was about to hang up the phone, Xiao Weidong quickly said. Don't. Don't. Don't hang up. I made an appointment with the child, and the child is still waiting. Song Qian, who was unable to hang up the phone successfully, said in a calm tone. She's doing papers there. I also have students here who are quite busy. Don't disturb me, go back first. After finishing speaking, Song Qian hung up the phone. Upon hearing Song Qian hang up and the beeping sound in his ear, Xiao Weidong reluctantly put the phone back into his pocket. Looking back on the drama, Xiao Weidong, who was taken away by security guards as a pervert because Song Qian refused to open the door and followed the residents in, failed to succeed. Xiao Weidong decided not to launch a strong attack, but to use his wits. Although the misunderstanding was later resolved, Mr. Xiao Weidong still wants face, okay. After careful consideration of how to get in, Xiao Weidong really came up with a solution. 
then I picked up my phone and searched for it. Finally, I found a property manager's phone number that I had added for convenience when I was living here before and dialed it. After the phone was connected, I briefly talked to the property manager. Unexpectedly, the property manager gave me a lot of face and without saying a word, he directly delivered Xiao Weidong to Song Qian's doorstep. After thanking the property manager, Xiao Weidong rang the doorbell with a telescope bought for Ingzi. Song Qian, who was busy making tonic diet in the kitchen, heard the doorbell and remembered that she thought it was the student who had come to make up lessons. She didn't know it was Xiao Weidong, so she asked Ingzi, who was still working in the room, to open the door and shout. Ingzi! Ingzi! Go and see who's here, mom can't leave. Upon hearing the sound of Song Qian asking her to open the door, Ingzi, who was still doing the exercises, put down her pen and walked towards the door, answering as she walked. Okay, mom. Ingzi walked to the door and asked, who is it? Yingzma. Open the door, be stunned. Xiao Weidong, who was holding a telescope outside, heard Ingzi happily reply inside the door. When Ingzi heard that his father Xiao Weidong was outside the door, he reached out and grabbed the doorknob, opening the door with great joy, saying, Dad. Why did you come? After seeing the door open, Xiao Weidong was about to enter with something and said, Why, Dad is not welcome. Without waiting for Ingzi to answer, Song Qian, who heard that it was Xiao Weidong, quickly pushed Ingzi away from the kitchen, taking three and two steps to welcome Xiao Weidong in. She came to the door and stopped Xiao Weidong from entering, saying. How did you get up here? And turning back to Xiao Ingzi with a serious and unquestionable expression, he said, you go back and write the paper first. Xiao Ingzi, who was pushed away, could only make a gesture of showing her hands to Xiao Weidong, indicating that she was powerless and seeking her own blessings. Later, Ingzi returned to the room and closed the door, but he didn't keep it tightly closed and eavesdropped there. Speaking of Song Qian returning to the door, she saw Ingzi holding the door handle in her left hand and leaning her phone against the door frame in her right hand. She raised an eyebrow at Xiao Weidong and said. How did you get up here? Xiao Weidong, who was at the door, put down his binoculars and hugged his arms, saying to Song Qian. You won't let me come up. The property manager personally brought me up. Song Qian sneered at Xiao Weidong's provocative words and said, Then why don't you let him see you in? Xiao Weidong ignored Song Qian's words and instead picked up an astronomical telescope on the ground, saying to her, Isn't Ingzi fond of astronomical telescopes? The goods arrived today and I'll bring them to the child. After speaking, Xiao Weidong sent the telescope into the door. Song Qian picked up the telescope that Xiao Weidong had placed inside the door and placed it on the ground outside the door, saying. How can I have time to play this in my senior year of high school? Take it away. Xiao Weidong looked at the telescope that Song Qian had placed outside the door and said in silence. This is a child's hobby, can't father support it? After speaking, Xiao Weidong picked up the telescope and put it back into the room. Song Qian saw Qi Weidong bring the telescope back into the room and said, I haven't seen your support for so many years. What are you blindly supporting at such a crucial time in high school? After finishing speaking, Song Qian picked up the telescope on the ground and put it back outside the door, saying, No way. Xiao Weidong saw Song Qian, who was not allowed to enter the house, feeling helpless and said, Do I still have a higher support score? Can't you just let me go? Song Qian looked at the door and said anxiously, Do you know that Ingzi is very busy now? In his third year of high school, he is racing against time every second. It was just here that Song Qian made a phone call. Seeing Song Qian answer the phone, Xiao Weidong quickly picked up his telescope and ran into Ingzi's bedroom. He opened the door and exclaimed happily, Ingzi. Ingzi, who was eavesdropping at the crack of the door, thought someone was about to open the door and thought it was Song Qian coming in. She quickly went to the table to prepare it. But when he saw Xiao Weidong coming in, he stood tall and exclaimed, Dad! Why did you come? 
Xiao Weidong placed the astronomical telescope on the ground of Ingzi's bedroom and said excitedly to Ingzi. Dad will buy you your favorite astronomical telescope, take a look. After seeing the telescope, Ingzi crouched down with his eyes shining brightly, and fiddled with it, excitedly smiling at Xiao Weidong. Right, right, that's the telescope I want. Thank you, Dad. Subsequently, Ingzi stood up and seemed to think of something. She touched her hair with her hand and lowered her head in frustration, saying. How about you take it back? I've been busy studying lately, and my mom definitely won't let me play. Later, Ingzi sat on the chair and explained helplessly to Xiao Weidong, now it's almost time for class exams, and my mother is watching me studying all day. Xiao Weidong sat on the bed next to him and started learning and chatting with Ingzi. Just as they mentioned whether they were willing to study abroad or not. Before Ingzi could answer, he heard the sound of the bedroom door opening, and then saw Fang Yifun open the door and enter. Seeing Fang Yifun greeting him, Xiao Weidong stood up and said, Find Ingzi. Let's talk about it. After greeting Ingzi, he walked out of her bedroom and arrived at the living room, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Meeting the Fong family for the first time. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 Meeting the Fong family for the first time, seeing Yingzi slash Fong Yifun playing with the astronomical telescope together, Xiao Weidong didn't disturb them too much and instead left Yingzi's bedroom for the living room. By the way, when watching TV dramas before being reborn, there are always many people who believe that the two of them are very suitable to be together when they see the comments below. But Xiao Weidong believes that if Fang Yifun doesn't become very popular in the entertainment industry in the future, the two of them may still be together. If Fang Yifun really has a place in the entertainment industry, the possibility of them getting together is very small because the celebrity's private space is very limited, and the more popular they become, the busier they become. Many big stars go to film for several months, and the entertainment industry is not as beautiful as it appears. Inside, there are also various swords and shadows, as well as various exchanges of interests. Of course, it's too early to think about these things now. Fang Yifun is only in his third year of high school and has no plans to take the art exam yet. Xiao Weidong shook his head to shake off the thoughts in his mind and walked outside the kitchen door to greet Tong Wenjie, who was chatting with Song Qian and wearing a black dress. Wenjie, things have been pretty good lately. Long time no see. Tong Wenjie, who was chatting with Song Qian, saw Xiao Weidong greeting her and immediately turned around to rush towards Xiao Weidong, pretending to be enthusiastic and replying. Great. Great. It's been a long time since we last saw each other. Zhou Weidong casually exchanged a few simple greetings with Tong Wenjie, who pretended to be polite. Later, Song Qian, who was standing beside her, was a bit unhappy and said, You've also given this thing away. If there's nothing else, let's go first. Xiao Weidong was about to speak when he heard the creaking sound of the bedroom door opening. Fang Yifun came out of Ingzi's bedroom and shouted to Tong Wenjie. Mom! When will the roast duck arrive? I'm starving to death. Song Qian, who was standing beside her, heard Fang Yifun cry out of hunger. She looked around and said to Fang Yifun. Then I'll find you something to eat first. Tong Wenjie quickly stopped Song Qian with her hand and said to Fang Yifun, You don't need to rush. Your father is already on the way. Wait a moment. Xiao Weidong, who heard Fang Yuan coming, pretended to be very surprised and said, Lao Fang, come. Then I'll sit down. I'll wait for Lao Fang and say hello to him. You guys talk to each other, don't worry about me. Without waiting for an angry response from Song Qian, Xiao Weidong walked over to the sofa and sat down. Tong Wenjie stopped Song Qian who wanted to get angry because Xiao Weidong was sitting on the sofa and not walking. I took Song Qian to her room inside and started chatting. Today at school, teacher Li Meng suggested that Fang Yifun stay in class. Xiao Weidong, who saw Tong Wenjie and Song Qian chatting in the room, 
was about to pick up his phone and take a look when he heard Fang Yifun in Ingzi's room shouting arrogantly, Let's die. Tong Wenjie. Come over here. I have something to say to you. Then Tong Wenjie, who was chatting with Song Qian, shouted, Fang Yifun. What are you doing? Die. Seeing the funny interaction between Fang Yifun and his son, Xiao Weidong smiled, feeling very amused. Later, Xiao Weidong picked up his phone and flipped through it, but his thoughts drifted towards the distance, thinking about the main purpose of coming to Song Qian's house today. The main purpose is to see Yingzi, but I insist on finding this node and hearing that Fang Yuan will come later. I also insist on sitting for a while and enduring Song Qian's cold eyes. In fact, the main purpose is to say in front of Fang Yuan Tong Wenjia about going to the oath-taking ceremony tomorrow. As for why he had to speak in front of Tong Wenjia Fang Yuan, it was because he was afraid that Song Qian would hear that he was going to Ingzi's oath-taking ceremony tomorrow and start arguing without the two of them. Xiao Weidong is not afraid of Song Qian, let alone having feelings for her, but is afraid that their argument will hurt Ingzi. If the two are present, at least they won't argue too seriously, and if Fang Yuan and Tong Wenjie are present, they will also stop the two from arguing. Moreover, with his own good brothers around, he will definitely help to smooth the situation. Thinking of this, Xiao Weidong heard a knock at the door of Song Qian's house. Xiao Weidong knew that if there was no accident, it must have been around. Then she stopped Song Qian, who was about to open the door, and stood up, saying, I'm going to open it. I'm going to open it. Without waiting for Song Qian to reply, he walked directly to the door and opened it. After opening the door, I saw that my face was round and my stomach was bulging, but I could still see a trace of Fang Yuan, who used to be a handsome guy when he was young, holding a roasted duck and jokingly saying to Chiao Weidong. I didn't hear the sound right, I thought I had traveled through time. How do you follow? Taking the things in Fang Yuan's hand with both hands, he didn't say to himself as the male protagonist in the play, I came to see Yingzi. I heard from Fan Fan that you were coming, so I stayed for a while to say hello to you. I didn't feel that Xiao Weidong, who was different from before, didn't speak and turned around to close the door. Chatting in the room, Song Qian, who had just arrived, ended her conversation with Tong Wenjie and walked to the door, enthusiastically speaking to Fang Yuan. Here we go. I'll serve you some soup. Then I walked to the kitchen. Upon hearing someone from outside, Ingzi Fang Yifun came out of the bedroom and greeted Fang Yuan separately. Dad. Hello Uncle Fang. Upon hearing the two children greet each other, Fang Yuan responded happily and said, Hey. Hey. Okay. Come and have some roast duck. Everyone came to the dining table, put down the roast duck, and remembered Xiao Weidong. He asked Song Qian in the kitchen, Teach your song. Do you have beer at home? After finishing speaking, Fang Yuan turned to Xiao Weidong and said with a bright smile, Let's have a roast duck and beer later, take a whole bite. Xiao Weidong, who was standing aside, did not want to stay like Xiao Weidong in the drama, but waved his hand and said. No. No. After eating, I'll say hello to you and leave. Upon hearing that Fang Yuan wanted to keep Xiao Weidong for dinner, Tong Wenjie, afraid of Song Qian's displeasure, gave Fang Yuan a warning and said. You go ahead and slice the duck first. For a moment, he didn't understand Tong Wenjie's meaning. With a bewildered expression, Fang Yuan glanced at Xiao Weidong in front of him, then turned around to reflect on teacher Song Qian Song and said, Yes. Come on, I'm going now. Then Fang Yuan went to the kitchen to slice ducks. Xiao Weidong, who hadn't waited for Song Qian to speak, said to Fang Yuan, the kitchen duck, and Tong Wenjie, who was busy at the table, Fang Yuan, I'm leaving first. Wenjie, I'm leaving. As he changed his shoes, he said to Song Qian, who was serving soup in the kitchen, then we'll meet at Shida tomorrow. After finishing speaking, Xiao Weidong, who had put on his shoes, quickly opened the door and walked out before Song Qian could react. Xiao Weidong, 
who arrived outside the door, praised himself and silently said, I'm really smart. After finishing speaking, I'll leave and save on talking. After giving himself a thumbs up, Xiao Weidong quickly walked towards the elevator and breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that Song Qian had not caught up. Song Qian, who was serving soup in the kitchen at home, heard that Xiao Weidong was going to the oath-taking ceremony tomorrow and had just gone to chase him out. A circle of ducks on the side, seeing that Song Qian was about to chase after her, quickly blocked Song Qian with cover for Xiao Weidong and asked, Teacher Song. Which plate should I use to hold the good ducks? Seeing the circle blocking her, Song Qian, who knew she couldn't catch up with Xiao Weidong even if she chased after him now, could only come back to find the plate. Xiao Weidong, who had been keeping his phone silent, returned home and saw countless missed calls and WeChat messages from Song Qian on his phone. He knew everything without listening. Xiao Weidong did not choose to call Song Qian back but instead sent a WeChat message, roughly meaning. I am Ingzi's father and should not be absent from the important ceremony of the child, Barbara Barbara. After replying to the message, Xiao Weidong muted his phone and went to prepare dinner. After receiving the WeChat message from Xiao Weidong and making several phone calls, Song Qian reluctantly accepted this fact. After finishing the meal, Xiaomeng returned from the decoration site and briefly talked to Xiaomeng about today's events. After dinner, she went to bed there was nothing to say overnight I really feel that the two of them are not a good match. Being a celebrity wife is too difficult. If she had a daughter in the future, she would definitely disagree with finding a celebrity boyfriend. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Oath Ceremony You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Oath Ceremony The next morning, after waking up, Xiao Weidong was trying on the clothes he was going to wear today in front of the bedroom mirror. After trying on a few sets, I couldn't determine which one to wear, and in the end, I sat in front of the makeup mirror, putting on makeup and pajamas. I couldn't see this man with difficulty choosing. He stood up and helped Xiao Weidong choose a dark grey checkered suit, and said. Don't wear too flashy, this dark outfit is perfect. After all, today is the school's oath-taking ceremony. After taking the clothes from Xiaomeng's hand and changing them, Xiao Weidong looked at Xiaomeng in front of the mirror and said, Can you still see my handsome demeanor from the past? Xiaomeng, who was putting on makeup, didn't speak and gave her a blank eye. Little Dream, who seemed to suddenly think of something, stopped putting on makeup and turned around to frown at Xiao Weidong, instructing him. Although I agree with you going to Ingzi's oath-taking ceremony, you must keep a distance from teacher Song after going. You can't have any other ideas. Xiao Weidong, who was still smelling beautiful in front of the mirror, heard his wife Xiaomeng's jealous words. He immediately stepped forward and hugged Xiaomeng, kissing her in the ear, saying. Why are you still jealous? What other ideas can I have? We're all married now. The past is over, and now I'm the only one in my heart. Otherwise, I wouldn't go. As soon as Xiaomeng heard that Xiao Weidong couldn't say anything, she seemed to be coquettish and rolled her eyes one after another, saying. Don't refuse to go. Let's go. Don't miss such an important moment for Ingzi because of me. If others knew about it and thought I was being too careful. Xiao Weidong, who was holding a little dream sitting in front of the makeup table, heard his words and still coaxed him, saying. I knew my wife was the most reasonable. If we stick to it for less than a year, we'll hold our wedding after Ingzi finishes his college entrance examination. After hearing Xiao Weidong finish speaking, Xiaomeng said, It's not that I'm being too narrow-minded and complaining. But no woman wants her husband and ex-wife to have more contact. After patiently listening to Xiao Meng's complaints, Xiao Weidong hesitated for a moment and said, Why don't you come with me? Upon hearing that Xiao Weidong was going with him, Xiao Meng smiled and said, I still can't do it. It's embarrassing for Ingzi to have another unpleasant argument with Teacher Song because I'm going. Xiao Weidong said sincerely to Xiao Meng, It's okay. Anyway, Ingzi knows about our reunion but he doesn't know that we have already obtained the certificate. It's better not to do it. 
The decoration at the gym can't leave, and it's embarrassing for me to go. Upon hearing that Xiaomeng truly wanted to go, she didn't want to go and refused. Seeing Xiaomeng who really doesn't want to go, help him tidy up his pajamas and promise him. Okay then. I'll go and get back quickly, I promise not to communicate more with Song Qian. More communication is needed. If it's not necessary to communicate, don't communicate anymore. Upon hearing Xiao Weidong's promise, Xiao Meng, who had a more beautiful smile and a smile, spoke out of sync. Seeing Xiao Meng's mood improve, Xiao Weidong breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. After Xiao Meng put on her makeup and changed into clothes, Xiao Weidong, who was sent to supervise the decoration of the gym, came to Chunfeng Middle School. Driving to the outside of Chunfeng Middle School, Xiao Weidong saw cars all over the door. Helplessly, he could only search for empty parking spaces everywhere. Finally finding a place to park, Xiao Weidong got off the car and walked into the school. Xiao Weidong, who raised his hand to look at his watch, saw that it was still early and decided not to meet up with Song Qian Yingzi for now. When it was too early, he also had an argument with Song Qian. Xiao Weidong, who looked around, also saw Yingzi and Fang Yifun, who was serving as a licking dog to his classmate Huang Jitao, on the playground. After a smile, Xiao Weidong decided to get some balloons. I remember Yingzi in the drama was originally written as CNSA, full name for National Space Administration, by Xiao Yingzi when she was releasing the balloon. Song Qian was not satisfied with forcing Yingzi to write on the balloon that she wanted to take the exam for Tsinghua and Peking University. Later, she even went too far by writing on the balloon that she wanted to get a score of 700. The desire for control has almost reached a pathological state. I walked around and found the staff member who was responsible for distributing balloons. Unexpectedly, this staff member was also from northeast China, and after a successful conversation, I wanted to reach the balloon. Xiao Weidong, who was carrying a balloon in his pocket, strolled around and found that it was about to start. He looked around and found Song Qian's position, walking towards her and merging. Xiao Weidong, who sat down next to Song Qian, remained silent. Song Qian turned around and saw Xiao Weidong sitting next to her unhappy and said, You really came. Why can't I come? Today is such an important day for Yingzi, I must have a chance Xiao Weidong replied to Song Qian. Later, Xiao Weidong ignored Song Qian's grumbling and took out his phone, intending to find Yingzi to take a photo and record it. After taking the photos, I heard the host teacher Pan announcing that the oath-taking ceremony was about to begin. After hearing the start, Xiao Weidong took out the assist sign he had just taken from the car and raised it. I saw the first two classes taking vows and shouting slogans, and heard the host teacher Pan introduce the achievements of outstanding students in each class. Then, when teacher Pan introduced Yingzi to class 3, Xiao Weidong immediately picked up his phone and started recording videos. When the host Pan Shui introduced that Yingzi and his classmate Huang Jitao had achieved results in previous citywide competitions, Xiao Weidong proudly stood up and waved while recording a video. After each class passed by, the principal announced the start of the oath-taking ceremony. After a few words, he invited Ji Yang Yang's father, Ji District Chief, to speak on behalf of the students' parents, and Huang Jitao to speak on behalf of the students. Subsequently, there was also a falling incident where Fang Yifun went to a high place to take photos of Huang Jitao. Finally, Fang Yifun ended up pretending to be unconscious and going to the medical room. Soon it was time to release the wishing balloon, and Xiao Weidong and Song Qian, who had not had much communication, got off the stands and went to the playground to look for Yingzi. Xiao Weidong and Song Qian met Yingzi, and after finding Yingzi, Xiao Weidong saw that Yingzi had already written his dream, CNSA, full name of National Space Administration, on the balloon. Song Qian took the balloon that Yingzi had already written her ideal and asked in confusion, CNSA, what is this? Xiao Yingzi saw that Song Qian didn't understand what CNSA was, and she felt a little angry. This is my dream. It's not something. Later, 
He also explained to Song Qian what CNSA means. After listening to Xiaoyingzi's explanation, Song Qian was somewhat dissatisfied and said, On the occasion of the college entrance examination, learning is the most important. There should be wishes written on this. Then he took the pen from Xiaoyingzi's hand and wrote on it that he was going to be admitted to Tsinghua University and Peking University. When Xiao Weidong, who was silent on the side, saw Xiaoyingzi pouting in displeasure because Song Qian wanted to write about Tsinghua University and Peking University. Xiao Weidong took out the balloon that the staff had requested before and blew it up. After blowing it up, he took out a pen from his pocket and rewrote CNSA, there is a note behind the balloon that Ingzi is happy every day. After finishing writing, he closed his pen and handed it to the unhappy Ingzi on the side. Come on. Dad, there's a balloon here, let's write another one. Just now, Chiao Ingzi, who saw Chiao Weidong blowing balloons again, was initially unclear. But when he saw Xiao Weidong rewrite CNSA on the balloon and write wishes for himself to be happy every day on the back of the balloon, he showed a happy smile. Ingzi took the balloon and gave Xiao Weidong a hug. With a smile on her face, she said, Thank you, Dad. Xiao Weidong looked at Ingzi who was hugging him and reached out to touch her head, saying, Just be happy. Song Qian looked at Xiao Weidong, who had taken out another balloon, while Xiao Ingzi, who was happy after looking at it, remained silent. Xiao Weidong tied his blown balloon and the balloon issued by the school together, and the three of them flew together. A crisis was resolved by a balloon. The coding has gone, end of this chapter. Chapter 8 Investment You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Investment After the oath-taking ceremony ended, a crisis was resolved. Xiao Weidong bid farewell to Ingzi and watched her and her classmates return to the class, intending to leave. At the school gate, I had intended to say hello to Song Qian, who was traveling with me, to ease our relationship. But unexpectedly, Song Qian, who was still angry, turned around and left without giving Xiao Weidong a chance to speak. Xiao Weidong looked at Song Qian's back and shook his head helplessly, muttering to himself, this shows how clear his choice is. If he remarries Song Qian, how sad the days ahead will be. Marriage is finding a wife for oneself, not a mother for oneself. If we remarry Song Qian, we will definitely take care of ourselves just like taking care of our children. Xiao Weidong doesn't want to eat her durian stewed chicken. Later, Xiao Weidong fastened his seatbelt and started the car, preparing to go to his still renovated gym to have a look. However, to my surprise, there are so many families with cars now. There are cars at the entrance of Chunfeng Middle School, which has been stuck for a whole hour. At the entrance of the gym, I got off at Xiao Weidong and raised my hand to take a look. It was already noon. After getting off the car and not directly entering, Xiao Weidong walked to a nearby restaurant, packed some vegetables, and bought some drinks. I planned to add a meal to the decorator. Xiao Weidong, holding food and drinks in both hands, panted as he walked into the door of the still-renovated gym. The worker who was working quickly took the food from Xiao Weidong's hand when he saw it. Xiao Weidong, who was picked up by the workers, rubbed his hands, which were sore from being held in the packaging bag while holding the food and drinks. I bought some hard dishes and drinks, you can share them and then work after finishing them, said the leading decorator the leading worker said to Chiao Weidong, thank you, Mr. Chiao. Then all the workers were called in to start distributing the food, and after the food was distributed, all the decoration workers spoke out to thank Chiao Weidong. Chiao Weidong waved his hand and said, you don't need to thank me. Let's eat first. As Chiao Weidong watched as everyone had already prepared their meals and started eating, he picked up his and Xiaomeng's lunch and walked to Xiaomeng, who was planning the specific placement of fitness equipment. Chiao Weidong walked up to the table and opened the lid of Xiaomeng's favorite dish, placing it properly, and then made a sound. Don't look at it for now, let's eat first. Today for lunch, you have your favorite fried green shrimp and fried big shrimp. When we were just dividing the meal, we had already noticed that Xiao Weidong was coming but didn't disturb us. 
Xiaomeng put down the half-drawn planning map and said. Why did you come over? The school is done now. Xiao Weidong took out his chopsticks and handed them to Xiao Meng, who replied, It's already done. If it weren't for the traffic jam, it would have arrived long ago. I didn't take your ex-wife home by the way, joked Xiao Meng, who picked up a shrimp and gave it as a chewy gift for import Xiao Weidong glanced silently at Xiao Meng, who was stuttering from eating, and opened the water next to her, handing it to her. You're either energetic or not, Ingzi's house is right next to the school. Do you need me to deliver it? Xiao Meng joked and said, All right, I'm just joking with you. You're not funny either. Xiao Weidong glanced at Xiao Meng and didn't speak. After finishing the meal, I packed the delicious lunch box and walked outside to throw it into the trash can. I also casually asked how long it would take for the decoration to be completed. After receiving an answer from the renovation workers, Xiao Weidong said goodbye to his dream of finishing his meal and makeup and came to his own company. After arriving at the company, Xiao Weidong sat in his office chair and flipped through the company's financial statements, discovering that he had also invested in some entertainment companies, including domestic entertainment giant Brother Media. Xiao Weidong saw that this was not feasible. Around May 2018, his stock price plummeted due to the celebrity tax evasion incident. Brother Media, who had not yet recovered, encountered the epidemic again, and the entire entertainment industry was in a slump from its peak of billions to just over 7 billion in 23 years. Thinking of these, Xiao Weidong immediately called his subordinate manager Hu and ordered. Manager Hu. We will gradually sell off all the stocks of our brother media and all other entertainment companies we hold now. Manager Hu, standing at the table, looked at Xiao Weidong, who had asked him to sell shares in brother media, and asked in confusion, why? Mr. Xiao. Brother Media has had a very good profit situation this year. Would it be a bit of a loss to sell it now? Xiao Weidong looked at the old employee in front of the table questioning his decision, but he was not angry, after all, no one would know that there would be a famous female star tax evasion incident in the future. But Xiao Weidong couldn't explain, so he couldn't say he came from the future. He could only perfunctorily say, I have other plans. Manager who looked at Xiao Weidong, who clearly didn't want to explain the reason, and didn't ask much. The questioning just now can be considered as fulfilling his own blame. After all, that boss doesn't like disobedient employees either. The only way I can achieve my current position is by being obedient. Manager who, who didn't say much, greeted Xiao Weidong and turned around before leaving the office. Watching manager who leave, Xiao Weidong decided to think about which stocks would soar in the coming years. Time slowly passed, and Xiao Weidong, sitting in the chair, received a message from Hu Jingli, stating that he had sold all the stocks related to entertainment companies and recovered more than 20 million yuan. Seeing over 20 million yuan in funds in his account, Xiao Weidong expressed great satisfaction. After all, he had only spent less than 15 million yuan on these stocks at the beginning, and a quarter return rate was also acceptable. These 20 million yuan cannot be slept on in the account. After thinking for a moment, Xiao Weidong instructed manager Hu to buy 10 million yuan of Maotai stock. Now in 2017, Maotai's market value was only around 70 billion dollars, and by 23 years, this 10 million can be turned into 60 million, after all, it is a state-owned enterprise that can be held for a long time. There are still 10 million left to buy Tesla, and when its market value reaches nearly trillions of dollars, it can be safely increased by 30 times. Have you made a profit? After thinking about how Tesla's market value will skyrocket in the future, Xiao Weidong decided to add 10 million to reach a total investment of 20 million. When the market value reaches trillions, he will sell off and his own value will definitely skyrocket. Xiao Weidong wiped his mouth when he thought about his future skyrocketing value and didn't know whether to buy a villa or an airplane. Raising his hand to check that it was already 4 o'clock, Xiao Weidong decided to leave early for a while and didn't want to wait for traffic congestion, after all, Beijing has evening rush hour after thinking about this, 
Xiao Weidong tidied up the documents on the table, took the car key and phone, and left the office. Walking to Manager Hu's workstation, he said, Manager Hu, I'll leave first. Please implement the investment project I instructed as soon as possible. After speaking, he bid farewell to the worker Xiao Hu and left the company, leaving Manager Hu working overtime. Xiao Weidong left the company and went to the gym to pick up Xiao Meng and go home. By the way, the current investment in the gym is 520,000 yuan in rent. The renovation cost has already been paid for more than half of the 200,000 yuan. After the renovation is completed, a final payment of 10 yuan will be paid, including 300,000 yuan in fitness equipment, tables, chairs, benches, computers, air conditioning, and other miscellaneous expenses, which are approximately 1.2 million yuan. After returning home for dinner, the two of them did some things that both adult men and women love to do before falling asleep. There was nothing to say overnight. Encoding is not easy, welcome everyone to share their own opinions. Thank you to every friend for casting their recommended votes, monthly tickets. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Caring for Daughters. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Caring for Daughters Xiao Weidong went to work at the company in the morning, but skipped work again at noon. Who makes him the boss? I went to the gym that was still being renovated and had lunch with Xiao Meng, who was supervising the renovation. After staying for a while until the afternoon, Xiao Weidong remembered that today was the first day of Ingzi's class division exam. He took his phone and car key and said to Xiao Meng. Xiao Meng. I'll go out later and buy some snacks for Ingzi. Xiao Meng, who was busy, didn't respond to Xiao Weidong's words. Instead, she waved her hand and went back to work. My own business is different from working for others. When Xiao Meng started working, she could be one second late, as long as she wasn't late. It's good to be the boss now. It's like getting beaten up, as long as you have nothing to do, just keep an eye on the decoration every day. Watching the busy Xiao Meng shake his head helplessly, Xiao Weidong arrived near Chunfeng Middle School. After parking the car, Xiao Weidong plans to go to KFC near the school to buy some junk food that Song Qian usually doesn't let Ingzi eat. Xiao Weidong walked towards the school gate with a large bag of 145 KFC set meals for five people in his hand. A few steps later, I saw a group of parents gathered around the school gate because the students had to attend evening self.study. The school notified me that they were arguing because they were late. Sharp-eyed Xiao Weidong also discovered Song Qian and the familiar Fang Yuan. I also saw that Song Qian was meddling and took out her phone, saying that the school had already notified her. If it weren't for Fang Yuan helping Song Qian out, I wouldn't know how it would end in the end. Song Qian doesn't even think that with so many parents present, you have a phone. No one else has it. What should you do if your parents are far away from home and you lift your but close to home? Parents arguing here just want to see how the school will handle it properly in the end, using you and Song Qian to find a sense of superiority here. Xiao Weidong, who leaned against the tree trunk to watch the excitement, did not step forward, but planned to wait for Song Qian to leave before going. After a while, the parents scattered one after another and saw that Song Qian gave tonic diet and review questions to Ingzi who ran out of the teaching building. Seeing Ingzi running back to the teaching building with tonic diet and test paper, Fang Yuan and Song Qian also left. Xiao Weidong, holding KFC in his hand, immediately called Ingzi and said, Ingzi. Come out here. Dad will bring you some food. Okay dad. I'll be out right away, Ingzi, who had just entered the class at school and was about to give Fang Yifun a copy of the review questions, received a call from her father. Ingzi, who ran all the way to the school gate, saw Xiao Weidong gasping for breath and saying roughly. Dad, why did you come too? My mom also came just now. Did you touch her? Watching Ingzi running and sweating, Xiao Weidong smiled and said, Dad saw your mom, but he didn't let your mom see Dad. You can rest assured. 
Ingzi, who was afraid of her parents arguing together, felt relieved when she heard Xiao Weidong say so. Then he said, Bring me something delicious, Dad. Tell you about my mother secretly. The tonic diet she made is nutritious, but it is not palatable. Standing at the school gate, Xiao Weidong, who heard Ingzi roast about Song Qian's bad cooking, retorted. Eating that way is more healthy, and besides, isn't it because your dad improved your diet? After speaking, he took out a large bag of KFC hidden behind him and said, Dang 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 dang, surprise. Seeing Xiao Weidong lifting up his favorite KFC, Ingzi quickly took it over and tasted a piece. Dad! I love you so much, you saved me, he said with unclear speech when Xiao Weidong looked at Ingzi wolfing down fried chicken chunks, he felt sorry and said, Eat slowly, eat slowly. It's all yours. No one's competing with you, Dad bought a lot. Ingzi, who was busy dealing with the fried chicken nuggets in her mouth, didn't speak, but opened the cola and took a big sip. Xiao Weidong looked at Ingzi drinking cola and said, Dad bought a lot. Take the class and share it with Fan Fan. Dad will go to the supermarket to buy some snacks for you first. Fan Fan and his team should go to your house today. Dad will ask Uncle Fong to bring them to you when the time comes. Ingzi, who was preparing to return to class with something, said to Xiao Weidong, Okay. Dad. Xiao Weidong also said to Ingzi, who was preparing to return to the class, you should go back to the class first. Dad will come back when your grades in the class division exam are down. Xiao Ingzi coquettishly said to Xiao Weidong, if I do well in the exam, you'll have to treat me to a big meal. Xiao Weidong agreed, no problem, it happens to be your birthday soon. Dad not only treated you to a big meal, but also gave you a gift. After bidding farewell to Ingzi and seeing him back to class, Xiao Weidong drove to the supermarket near the school. After pushing shopping into the supermarket, I saw Song Qian and Fang Yuan picking things. Xiao Weidong, who didn't want to meet Song Qian, immediately walked out of this supermarket. Arriving at the neighboring supermarket, I chose some nutritious snacks, such as imported milk-flavored walnut chocolate, beef jerky, Oreo sandwich biscuits, waffles, dried meat and potato chips, and so on, all of which are usually loved by Ingzi. After selecting Xiao Weidong, he went to the supermarket where Song Qian and Fang Yuan were shopping after checking out at the door. At the checkout counter at the supermarket, Xiao Weidong took out his phone and dialed Fang Yuan. After hearing that Fang Yuan was connected, Xiao Weidong repeatedly asked Fang Yuan on the other end of the phone. Fang Yuan. Are you still in the supermarket? Are Song Qian with you? Fang Yuan heard Xiao Weidong ask if he was in the supermarket, and thought that Xiao Weidong was also in this supermarket. Looking around, there was no sign of Xiao Weidong's figure, and he said in confusion. Wow! How did you know I was in the supermarket? Teacher Song went elsewhere to choose something. Send someone to track me or Teacher Song. Then Fang Yuan joked and said something. Xiao Weidong listened to Fang Yuan's jokes and retorted. What are you tracking? You're not an important person, you're just a little legal officer who skips work every day. Fang Yuan smiled and said, that's tracking teacher Song Qian. Xiao Weidong impatiently said, I don't have time to chat with you. Come to the cashier at the door and I'll wait for you here. After speaking, Xiao Weidong hung up the phone. Not long after, I saw Fang Yuan rushing over wearing a white tee dot shirt and a plaid coat. Xiao Weidong saw a circle approaching and asked, Are you going to Ingzi's house later? The confused Fang Yuan heard Xiao Weidong ask him if he would go to Ingzi's house and said, Go. Today, Fang Yifun and Lei Er will go to Ingzi's house to write papers. Upon hearing that he was about to go to Ingzi's house, Xiao Weidong handed over the snacks he had bought for Ingzi. Take it. Subconsciously, Fang Yuan took a large bag of snacks and said, Old Zhou. Are you acting like a spy just to give me snacks? What are you thinking? I'm thinking of buying snacks for you. These are all for Ingzi. When you go to Song Qian's house, 
take them over and letting Zi Fan Fan and Leia share them. Xiao Weidong retorted to Fang Yuan. Fang Yuan heard that it was a snack bought for Ingzi and asked Xiao Weidong in confusion, why don't you go and deliver it yourself? Seeing that Song Qian had already walked over, Xiao Weidong perfunctorily said, if I ask you to give it to you, I can give it to you. I argue with Song Qian when we meet. I have to leave in advance. After speaking, he left the supermarket. Song Qian walked over and looked at Xiao Weidong, who had already left, and asked Fang Yuan with uncertainty, did Xiao Weidong leave just now? Fang Yuan jokingly said to Song Qian, yes. Old Xiao, this is the food he bought for Ingzi. After finishing speaking, Fang Yuan shook the snack in Song Qian's hand. Song Qian said, then why doesn't he give it to me himself? Fang Yuan said, I'm probably afraid of telling you that you don't accept junk food. Song Qian said speechlessly, this Xiao Weidong. He knows how to sneak around. Then she took the things she bought and went to pay the bill. Square and circle. After returning home to take a shower and lying in bed, Xiao Weidong received a message from Fang Yuan that he had given snacks to Ingzi and replied with an okay expression. Seeking collection, seeking monthly tickets. Kneel down and beg. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Accompanying Ingzi to Eat Hot Pot. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Accompanying Ingzi to Eat Hot Pot in the morning, Xiao Weidong woke up while sleeping with Xiaomeng in his arms. He saw Xiaomeng, who had not woken up yet, carefully reach out and pick up his phone to take a look at time. Ha! It's already 8 o'clock, yesterday was so indulgent. What a tiring cow, no plowed field. Xiao Weidong, who touched his waist with his right hand, lowered his head and glanced at Xiaomeng, who was still sleeping, and sighed. This won't work. After the gym opens, you must go exercise more. When Xiao Weidong picked up his phone and went to the bathroom to solve his personal problem, he thought to himself while walking, and then muttered to himself. Open the bathroom door and walk in, lift the toilet lid and sit down. Xiao Weidong took out his phone and saw the WeChat message that Ingzi sent him yesterday. Ingzi. Thank you dad. I received all the snacks you asked Uncle Fong to bring yesterday. Fortunately, it was Uncle Fong who brought them. Otherwise, my mom wouldn't have allowed any snacks. Xiao Weidong also sent a text to Ingzi. Whatever you want to eat, just tell dad. Dad will definitely find a way for you to eat it. On the way to school, Xiao Ingzi saw the message sent by Xiao Weidong and replied with a cat's nod expression. Later, Ingzi spoke in another voice. I'll tell you about dad. Yesterday was so interesting. After Uncle Fong gave me the snacks, my mom wanted to throw some she thought were unhealthy. I quickly picked them out and gave them to Fong Yifun, but my mom didn't throw them away. Then when I was doing the exam, I secretly asked Fang Yifun for several and took them back to the bedroom to hide. Later, Ingzi also sent me a very clever expression. Xiao Weidong was also happy to see the relaxed Ingzi and said, then you have to hide well. Don't be discovered by your mother. Later, I posted another message that I didn't trust. Don't keep playing with your phone while walking, just watch the car order. Ingzi, who arrived at the school gate, said, got it. I'm at school now, I won't talk to you for now. Wait for the good news of me entering the sprint class, prepare the gift. Xiao Weidong responded with an okay expression to indicate receipt. Xiao Weidong, who had finished using the toilet, flushed the toilet and left the bathroom. After answering in the bedroom, he saw that Xiaomeng had already woken up and was daydreaming in a big font on the bed. Xiao Weidong saw such a cute little dream walking up to the bedside and kissing his bare face, saying. Let's have dinner with Ingzi tonight. Xiaomeng, who had been kissed, turned to Xiao Weidong and said, I'll go too. Is that okay? Didn't you say it's best not to stimulate Ingzi in her third year of high school now? Xiao Weidong hugged Xiaomeng in his pajamas and said, It's okay. 
Besides, Ingzi is almost 18 years old and sensible now. It's not a big problem not to tell her we're already married. Upon hearing Xiao Weidong's explanation, Xiaomeng felt relieved and said. Okay. I'll go to work first, and then you can tell me the location and time. I bought Ingzi a gift in advance as a meeting gift. What does Ingzi like? Xiao Weidong said, just buy whatever girls like. I selected a big Lego she likes online and we will give it to her together. Xiao Meng looked back at Xiao Weidong, who was holding her, and said with a blank eye, that's not possible. I must choose a good one and make the first time we meet, Ingzi, have a better impression of me. Xiao Weidong smiled with relief as he tried to please Ingzi, saying. Thank you so much. Xiao Meng. After speaking, hold Xiao Meng tightly. It smells so bad, go wash up quickly. I still have to go to the gym later. The decoration is almost over, so keep an eye on it. Watching Xiao Weidong tightly holding on to her, Xiao Meng pretended to be disgusted and said something. Then the two of them got up to wash up, and then separated. Xiao Weidong went to the company, and Xiao Meng went to the gym. During lunch at the company, Qian Weidong received a call from Ingzi. Dad. Our grades have come down, and I have already been admitted to the sprint class, only ranking second, Lin Lair, the cousin of Fang Yifun, usurped the throne by Mao Chao. I will bring it back next time. Xiao Weidong comforted Ingzi, who was unhappy because he wasn't in first place, and said, the second place is also very impressive. Dad used to go to school, and every time he just passed the exam, he was much stronger than Dad. Upon hearing her father's comforting words, Ingzi, who was laughing from tears, asked, Do you still treat me to something delicious? Upon hearing that Ingzi was still concerned about gifts, Xiao Weidong said, Please. I'm sure I will. Not only will I treat you to delicious food, but I will also give you a surprise. What do you want to eat? Xiao Weidong asked Ingzi. Another mysterious gift, Ingzi, said, I want to eat hot pot but my mom doesn't usually let me eat it. Xiao Weidong. Okay, then go to Hai Di Lao. Let's have enough to eat today. I have to go to a friend today, Dad, let me tell you. Is that okay? When Xiao Weidong said he wanted to introduce himself to a friend, Ingzi, who was almost 18 years old, understood that it was his father's girlfriend. Okay, said Ingzi who also felt sorry for her divorced father then the father and daughter hung up the phone with a few simple words. After hanging up the phone, Xiao Weidong called Song Qian again and told her to invite Ingzi to dinner today. As school was about to end, Xiao Weidong asked the driver Lao Liang to take him to Hai Di Lao and book a spot in advance. Speaking of this driver, Lao Liang is very interesting. He has been very idle these days. He used to hire a driver who used to be quite busy drinking every day, but he didn't expect to drink much during this time, so he drove himself every day. Lao Liang was idle in the company. Today we can count on him. After arriving at Hai Di Lao, Xiao Weidong sent the location to Xiao Meng and Ingzi. Not long after, I saw Xiao Meng coming in wearing a yellow and white dress, still holding a gift for Ingzi in her hand. Judging from the packaging, it should be a watch and worth a lot of money. Xiao Meng looked around and walked across from Xiao Weidong. She placed her bag and gift box on a nearby chair and said, I'm not late, am I? Xiao Weidong looked at Xiao Meng sitting down and said, No, I just arrived. Ingzi said he will come home soon. Looking at the gift box on Xiao Meng's left chair again, he said, Is it appropriate for Ingzi to wear such an expensive watch while still at school? Xiao Meng glanced at Xiao Weidong and said, What do you know? This brand is quite good and very suitable for young girls to wear. Xiao Weidong, who Xiao Meng couldn't understand, didn't speak. He picked up his phone on the table, opened WeChat, and sent a message to Ingzi. Where have you been? Can you find it? Do you need to go pick you up? Ingzi, who had already arrived downstairs, heard the prompt sound on her phone and took out a glance, replying with a message. We have arrived downstairs, 
come up immediately. Then I saw Ingzi wearing the summer school uniform of Chunfo Middle School walking over. After seeing Ingzi coming over, Xiao Weidong looked up happily and said, Ingzi. Over here, come over quickly. Walking to the table, Xiao Ingzi saw Xiao Weidong calling out, Dad. Seeing Xiao Meng again, although she was mentally prepared, there were still some unnatural moments and she greeted him, Hello, Aunt Xiao Meng. Upon hearing Ingzi's arrival, Xiao Meng said to Ingzi, Ingzi is here. After finishing speaking, he quickly picked up the things from the chair beside him and handed them to Xiao Weidong, saying, Old Xiao, put the things on your side, Ingzi, sit with me. Watching Xiao Meng sit down enthusiastically, Ingzi said hello and sat down on the chair next to Xiao Meng. Xiao Weidong took the bag handed over by Xiao Meng and was very happy to see Ingzi sitting with Xiao Meng. P.S. There will be a conflict with Song Qian in the next chapter, end of this chapter.